Why, hello there, Anxious Cynic back again with another Mudimator tutorial. So a request I got recently that I thought would be fun to do, as you may have seen in the little video beforehand with poor animation that I threw together rather quickly, <laughs> uh, is how do you make a torch light up? So today we're going to tackle that subject and show you basically how I accomplished what I did in that, just, you know, the actual torch aspect, not the actual animation. Okay, we've got our Steve character here, and what we want to do is give him a torch. So that's going to be pretty easy. We're just going to go here, go ahead here to the single block from Minecraft. We're going to sort by name, click that twice so that it's ascending or descending. I don't know which one it is. Anyway, we're going to come down here to torch after the T's, and we're just going to create a regular torch there. We're going to come here and zero that in, and we're going to parent it to his arm. Now, this, of course, you don't have to parent it. This is just me showing you how to have the character holding it. If you want to have it on the wall or something, everything here applies. You would just position it where you want to, and no parenting or anything necessary. So, I'm just going to show you this way because... I don't know, maybe you'd want to do it like this. It's unusual or something. Anyway, we're going to take this and I'm just going to raise his arm so we can see it. I'm going to bend it a little bit. And there you go. There it is. That's the end of the tutorial. That's how you get a torch. Okay, never mind. Um, what we're going to do now is put a light on it. We're going to spawn a point light. Create. And we're going to take this. Let's go ahead and zero its location. And we're going to parent it to the torch we could parent it to the right arm or the torch it doesn't really matter i'm gonna actually i'm gonna parent it to the right arm uh because that way we don't have to drop down the torch to see the point light that's all you can do it however you like and i'm just gonna put it right around here we may adjust it but that's basically what we're gonna go with for now so that's what you got you have the light and things so let's go ahead and bring in a camera so that we can get whatever angle we want and let's put this up here we're going to turn on rendering and you get that not a whole lot of specialness going on what we're going to do is go ahead and reduce our lighting we're going to bring the background down and let's see here so as you can see in the the rendered section we got it pretty pretty odd looking or something uh there's a lot of brightness in the background still let's see if we can adjust that let's go to our light i'm gonna bring it down let's make it about 200 maybe let's bring the fade size up how much i don't know you can do it pretty much however you want and let's make it come on let's make it about 80 percent i'm gonna change the color because usually the torch is on fire right so it's not gonna be white light you're gonna have some kind of uh, yellow, orangish kind of light going on. Relatively subtle, something like that. May not be too bad. And uh, let me check my settings real quick here. I don't like the way the sky is looking, so give me one second. All right, guys, so what we have here, if you want to adjust this little issue here, let me go ahead and reposition the camera. Since we got all this brightness, we may want it to look a little bit more natural light. So what I'm going to do... Let's try to find a good color here for our fog, right? You see I have custom fog color enabled down here, so I'm going to go ahead and change that. You could turn it off entirely, but I just feel like it, it provides a, a pretty cool effect by keeping it. If I turn it off, I would turn off sky fog, and then you would get that effect there. You can turn off fog altogether, however you want to do it. Um, I kind of like having the horizon back there, so it looks kind of cool, I think. So that's what I'm going to do. Okay. So, you got your scene set up, you got Steve's holding the torch and everything. Let's uh, move our light around just to see what kind of lighting we're getting. Alright, so what you probably would want is, let's bring the light up just a little bit. Something like this, let's bring it back a tad. Uh, that looks pretty okay. You, you probably don't want it to be 100%... Um, realistic you know obviously you would think the light emits right from here but you may have to adjust where the light is to get the right look that you're after now the next thing we want to do is make the torch look kind of like it's actually lit 
And uh, this is a step I actually didn't know about or overlooked in one of my very first animations. The Ender Dragon Egg, you know, I can't even, the gift. There we go, that's the name of it. Uh, so what you want to do here is go to color of your torch and bring up the brightness a bit. Because the torch is, is lit up, right? So you want to make sure, see if you turn this off, it looks kind of like it's uh, not lit up at all. It's just very dull and whatnot, and it's not very bright at all. So I'm going to bring it up. It depends on your scene, but for me, I feel like 20% looks okay so that's what we're gonna go with and uh now we're gonna go back to our light here figure out exactly what looks good i feel like kind of having it out in front here looks pretty good something like that maybe maybe okay so there you go there's your torch um let's go ahead and just give steve a little bit of movement just because basically the reason i want to show this is because of the next step all right, so Steve walks, and let's go ahead and give him a basic walk animation here. <laughs> that horn kind of goes a little crazy with that, doesn't it? Oh, man. All right, so generally speaking, when you have a walk animation, uh, if you're doing it this way, you're probably not going to want the arm to swing so much, right? You're going to want it to go... Uh, a little less on the swingness, if that makes sense. So I'm going to go ahead and select every other keyframe here. And what I'm going to do is bring it up and bend it. And let's see what kind of result we get. And that still looks ridiculous. Okay, so what we're going to do is select these keyframes now of course you know if you're doing this with a custom walk cycle you don't have to do this step but uh, I'm just trying to make it look good for this little thing here we're doing there we go that's a lot better okay so what we're gonna do is go ahead and move our camera along with Steve here let's get it on back and there we go so Steve's walking and he's talking and doing all sorts of things okay so you got this and, and that looks okay but for a final touch what we're going to want to do let's go ahead and get rid of the the rendering for a second we're going to go up here and we're going to spawn a particle system and you could make your own of course if you are cool enough with the particle system uh, but for this one i'm just going to use a preset and i'm going to go to lo-fi fire it's very simple basic little fire thing there and we're going to go ahead and reposition it, zero it out, and we're going to parent this, you guessed it, to the torch. All right, so there we go. It's uh, connected to our torch, and I'm just going to bring it up. Nope, <laughs> that's the torch. All right, let's go ahead and select our uh, thing here. Let's bring that back, and let's select this, which is already selected. That's good. All right. And we have this, and as you can see, it doesn't look too bad. Uh, but I feel like the, the particles are a little big. And this is actually another question I got recently, is how to resize the particles. So uh, maybe this will be kind of a dual tutorial here. So what I'm going get, to get a do, <laughs> what I'm going to do, if I can talk, is go to our library here. Open the particle editor. You select particle creator, open the editor, and we have two different particle effects with this one, and they are fire and smoke. And the fire looks, it looks pretty okay. Uh, I don't really have that much of a problem with it, but I'm gonna scale it down just a tad. As you can see, the scale right now is 0 0.5, so I'm just gonna bring it down to 0 0.4 maybe. Just a little bit smaller, maybe 0 0.45, because 0 0.5 didn't look too bad. All right, so now we're going to go down to smoke, and I feel like the smoke is really the big thing here. And the smoke scale is actually set to be random and vary between 0 0.5 and 1, which is why you get some of the big ones and the small ones, which is pretty much what you want for smoke, but we want it to be uh, a good bit smaller number. And what I found is that the bigger number should probably actually be 0 0.5, and we'll have the smaller number be maybe 0 0.2. 
and then you end up with this. Maybe you want a little bit bigger. Let's try six and three. That doesn't look too bad. Once again, this is just showing you how to do it. You can do it however you like. All right, so don't judge me. All right, so there we go. We've got our torch. We've got the torch looking bright and shining like it should. And we have the particle system and we've got our light. Everything should be amazing now. So what I'm gonna do is bring up our screen if I can do it. Hang on, let me back this up. I'm gonna reduce the size of our timeline here. I'm gonna bring this, I can't click on it. I'm gonna bring this up and we are going to turn on rendering and hope that the particles in the point light don't, don't kill us. Looks like we're doing all right. And there you go. That's Steve, he's walking with his torch. It's all lit up, everything looks amazing. And it's good, man. Let's see what that looks like from uh, another angle here. Let's raise it up and have it look down maybe. Let's bring our camera, uh, where is it, this thing, let's raise this up and see what that looks like. So of course like your shadows are also gonna be affected by this. You may want to adjust uh, some of your parameters. Like for here, you can adjust the range of your light. You know, I just chose about 200 because I felt like it was okay. If you want to be a little bit dimmer of a torch, maybe 100, you know, something like that. Whatever you want. Your fade size also adjusts how uh, the light dissipates over time and things. I usually like having it relatively high for realistic lighting. You know, it depends on how bright the torch is supposed to be. I figured 80, 85 percent is probably okay. Um, and again, like you may want to go into your settings and adjust how your shadows are done. You may want to have them blurred a little bit more or tighter like these. You know, it depends on what you want it to look like. And all these things can go into getting that look that you're after. So, we go ahead and play that you just see Steve walk in there with his torch and his light and his particles and it looks great man and that's how you do it it's just that easy so that's it thanks for watching hope you enjoyed it hope you learned something hope it was helpful and I will see you in the next video